I, I have a, one one leading question for you. Yes, good. I, I looked up your name on the internet. I just put it on to the internet to see what would come up. And yes. <laughs> what came up was a very famous jockey. Are, were, are you the jockey? You know, I'm not, Skip. I know he's a, he won the, the the Kentucky Grand Derby, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know that's going to be a... <laughs> I, I, rem I remember when he won, too, I think 2014. I was like, man, that guy has my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, but that's okay. Uh, you, you probably can get a good uh, com comedy bit out of that. Uh, probably. Yeah, but I, I'm learning. Uh, you know, I, I, I've never done stand-up comedy. I, that was something I was planning to do. I was working on a routine and everything. And right when I was planning to do it, COVID hit. Yeah. So I was really sad because all the comedy clubs in LA are closed. And all yeah. the little amateur nights are closed. So I'm like, what yeah, what's but, the next but the, thing? But this is the opportunity to put your material together and, and <laughs> sharpen it up so it's ready to go. When, yeah, that's true. When this is over. Um, that's true. Skip. So uh, one reason I wanted to have this conversation, the first reason, and I want to make sure yeah. I emphasize it at the beginning, is that I'm personally really impressed by what you're what you've been doing on your youtube channel and Thank you. Thank i want i want to encourage you to um go on with it you know i know at the beginning when you when you only have 30 <laughs> or so followers it, uh, i know <laughs> it seems it seems like it will never get bigger but you know, believe it or not, I was that I was like that only four years ago. Wow! Wow! And uh, uh, Thank you, Skip. I, I had never done very much with with uh, YouTube. I'd done a lot of writing. I I wrote several books, and um, I created a uh, a website in 2010. But uh -huh. I was never getting any any interaction on the website you know mm. it, was, it was just always dead and mm. <laughs> and no one ever responded to my writing i probably sold three or four books wow uh, you know and and um uh, and so you suddenly, know a lot go ahead and you know a lot so that that surprises me sometimes like so much vast knowledge and and so little people look for you you know and i feel like when i discovered you're like wow man i got it I got to say something. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I'm like, thank you. You got to go keep going too. I, I really appreciate the knowledge. I was just looking at the red book. Uh, you, I think you read it. Uh, and I really, I've been, I, I got to the third episode or the fourth, somewhere on there, but I'm going to yeah. keep watching it. Yeah. yeah so I, read the, too, I read the whole thing online. So yeah. You, you, thank you. Thank you. It's there for you. It's and not in the public library. Or I didn't look hard enough. I couldn't find it in my, yeah. Well, you can get it probably on interlibrary loan if you put oh. put it in an application. So try try that interlibrary loan. You know, oh, when your cool. library opens again, our libraries here are not yet open. Um, oh, they're still closed. Yeah, they're still closed. But but um, but once the library is open, you you can get it on interlibrary loan, and yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, you can you can get. The small red book, the red book the for red readers book. edition, um, that's only twenty five dollars. Okay, yeah, definitely, okay. that's a great price. So, so you can find that on Amazon. And, okay, twenty five dollars. You know, and here's, I mean, here's my my copy of the readers edition. Oh you wow, can, wow! You can see I put all these tabs in it, and <laughs> and uh, I uh, beautiful. I, I marked it up a little bit. I can see. <laughs> Let me see wow. Yeah. Anyway, I marked it up quite a bit, and um, uh, but my my big red book, the the one that used yes. to be one hundred and fifty dollars, and now the oh, latest wow. latest I saw is they want two hundred and seventy dollars for it. On, oh my goodness! <laughs> on on uh, Amazon, I mean that's getting that's getting a little crazy but but people are buying it oh, and wow. they're buying it in many languages i mean yeah i have a yeah. i have a friend who uh, is in brazil and she got uh, it in, in portuguese so in portuguese wow yeah. 
So, but a anyway, you don't have to buy it. You can just listen to it. my readings if you want. I like to. both. Both is nice. Yeah. And, and also, uh, you can find the images from the Red Book on YouTube. Just put in, you know, Jung, Jung's Red Book images, and uh, it'll just come I take, up. I take notes, uh, Skip, so I hope you don't mind about you yeah, talking. No, no, not, not at all. Not all right, at all. That's all. been my thing. Okay. Yeah, not mm -hmm. at all. And, and so, but, you know, I, you probably would, should look at it at some point, and so you could always get it on liberal interlibrary loan i would hope interlibrary loan. definitely yeah. definitely it's good. you know so even if you don't have it in your local library you just ask them to to get it and you might have to wait a little while to get it yeah. but but you know if you're on a budget that's the thing to do and yeah. so anyway but i i'm here for you and i i just oh, want and i just wanted to emphasize at the beginning that I, I think that your reflections that you're putting onto the internet are very useful to many people. Okay. Um, Thank you, you, you know, leaving aside all these intellectual types that are, you know, you, you came to Ann Olenoff's uh, talk the other day and, and you yeah. made, you asked a very good couple of questions there and <laughs> And she took you seriously, okay? Yeah, and, and here's a woman who has been a Jungian analyst all of her of her life. She's a she's a medical doctor. She's a psychiatrist, and she is a professor of both psychiatry and religion at one of the leading seminaries in the United States, wow. Union, wow. Union Theological Seminary, and. Um, you know, I thought that she uh, treated you quite respectfully and, and yeah. well. And, you know, a, a lot of the people on that call were, you know, Jungian analysts and, and professional mental health professionals. Yes, yes. And so um, I think it's good for you to uh, interact and see uh, those people and, and ask them questions and, yeah and you know bring back from the experience what it means to you okay because you know only only a tenth of one percent of everybody is up to ann ulanoff's standard in terms of her education her experience mm -hmm. her career um, mm -hmm. You know, even I'm, I was very humbled to be able to wow. uh, introduce her, right, in, in that conference because uh, she's such an incredible person and she's yes. written, yes. she's written 17 books by herself and six with her husband. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and she's been writing books for 50 years. And so, wow. and so, um, you know, even even for me, uh, it's quite a humbling experience to be with her, but, um, you know, you don't have to be afraid of it. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and, um, and you can bring some things back that you learn from it and then put it into your words because most people are more like you than they are like Anne. Okay. Mm. And, and so you, you need to, you need to put it in your own words, what, what, is, what these things mean to you. And the other one is this book, which I just got yesterday called The Red, the book. Red book Hours. Okay. Wow. And uh, again, this is a very expensive book. It costs a hundred dollars. I'm going to, let me, I have to turn off my virtual background here for a minute because so, I want you to be able to see this book. Okay, the so book here's hours? the Red Book Hours. Red book. Uh, okay, and, and just look how thick it is. Wow, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. It, it weighs about 20 pounds. Wow. And it's a, it's a, a woman who's written a very, very detailed 
book about Jung's art. So, yeah, wow. for example, he, these are just corners of his pictures from the Red Book, for example. And mm. she's, she's talking about them in detail and about mm. how he did all these uh, images with dots, for example. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can find an example of it. But I mean, just um, let's see. Here. Okay, I mean, j just this one where he's trying to show the luminescence above this woman. And you can see how detailed that that image wow. is right yes 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 and and uh you know it's not it's not only the image of the women it's all the all the things that are above her that are you know raining down on her and uh what's the name of that image oh th this image name yeah uh this image i don't know but i i can pull some of these images up because that was amazing I, I, I have all the um, I have all the red book images, so let me uh, pull a few of them cool. up as we're chatting, and uh, let's see where I've got them here. Red book images, red book images. All right, so I mean, there's some really cool images here. So, for example, this one um, is this is a, a snake or a dragon coming up yeah. through through the ground, and you know, it's it's breathing its its life into mm. the into the universe. Okay. Yes. And so that's one example. Uh, I'll just show them briefly because you can, you'll be able later to go back and. Uh, and my question, uh, Skip, what is the significance of the snake? Well, the, the snake in Jungian psychology and in, uh -huh. in, in psychology generally was, um, and have you ever seen the caduceus? that the, you ever, have you ever yes. focused on the caduceus, which is the image of medicine that has yes. two, yes. two snakes, right? Okay, yes. so, so over thousands of years, people figured out that, you know, if you get bitten by a snake, it might kill you. But if you, wow. take, a, if you take a little bit of its poison, it might cure you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, and, wow. and and so the idea in psychology too is that uh -huh. that you know there's a little bit of the snake in everyone, and yes. and and it, it might cure you, okay? Yes. And um, so, are you familiar with the Euroboros, the 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 snake that? goes around in a circle yes of course okay yeah well um did you see the movie arrival okay there's arrival. a rival yeah if you haven't I don't, I, if you haven't seen arrival i urge you to see it okay because arrival, the, movie. the movie arrival because it's about aliens coming to uh the earth but yeah. what's interesting but it's a totally Jungian movie okay <laughs> they never say so but uh -huh. I, I watched this movie and i said oh my god this is all young <laughs> and and so one of the th one of the things about the aliens is they put up this symbol which is their writing system and every symbol looks like the Euroboros. okay it looks like wow. a, it, it looks like a circular snake and then it has little things coming down from it and that's how you can read their writing, right? And and so, uh, you know, I think we probably watched that movie 15 times myself. Arrival. Yeah. 
and because there's so much in it and to, uh, to understand it you have to watch it at least two times okay maybe, two times. <laughs> oh and, maybe, and maybe five before you <laughs> before you really understand this movie but yeah. then when you do understand it oh my god then it's so powerful um and uh, so let me share you with you another image that uh, i love from the uh, red book here's here's another one okay now oh, this, wow. this uh what this is symbolically is this is a um uh -huh. a, ma a mandala so-called a sort of a magic circle right uh -huh. and there's all this energy in the midst of the magic circle and the thing about this is that again you can see Jung's artistry because he's he's made this uh the luminescence the radiance of the sun uh mm. so so clear in this image right and um and so this is uh this is an an adept so-called adept which is a person who um, basically is enlightened right so he he never physically rises off the ground but he can envision himself rising off the ground hmm. and he can envision himself taking in the energy from the sun hmm. okay and and so he's actually floating here here's the adept he's he's like meditating and he's actually floating above the city of geneva here's geneva mm -hmm. um and this was a dream that Jung had in which the seas actually came up to geneva which they never did but Mm. He, he had a few dreams in the early part of his red book period which uh -huh. pr predicted world war one and it was from those dreams that he recognized that there was um, um, a collective unconscious in other words um, he had between october i think it was october of um of 20 or i'm sorry 1913 uh -huh. and july of 1914 he had five dreams and visions okay and uh -huh. each each of those dreams and visions um were horrible i mean one of them you know there there was a flood all over europe and the flood wasn't water it was blood and there were bodies floating in this in this ocean of blood and uh, you know boots float floating around and so on and at the time he said man i must be going crazy but but then um he had a speech that he had to give in scotland and he gave this speech on august the first uh 19 uh, 20 yeah 1914 which was the day that world war one started and he he said he was the happiest man in the world on that day oh, wow because he realized he wasn't crazy okay he realized he mm. wasn't crazy he realized that he had tuned in to the feeling that was all across europe that that a um, um that a war was mm -hmm. coming okay and so he yeah. He was seeing the war in his dreams and in his visions and um and then the war actually came and so therefore he knew he had been connected into the what's called the collective unconscious that's one of his basic ideas and so for example um i have such a feeling right now and mm my feeling is that um my my feeling and it's it's a prophecy it may well be be wrong but um mm. but my prophecy is that the president of the united states will resign uh, be oh, wow. before the republican convention um 
and um, I could be wrong. It's a yes. It's, it's a big leap, but I have that sense, and the reason and the reason I have that sense is because I was a young man. I was just finishing law school in 1974. Uh-huh. Uh, I, actually, I actually just graduated from law school in 1974 when Richard Nixon resigned. And I have the same feeling about that. I had the same feeling at that time that I have about this time. And, wow. and so, so Nixon resigned and I, I have the sense that, that Trump may resign. Um, you know, regardless of what you think about Trump, I think there, <laughs> there, are, there are forces, there are forces in the universe that are, you know, circling the wagons against him, not only in the Democratic Party, but also in the Republican Party. And, you know, they, they don't want to be dragged down by him in the election. And so they have to get rid of him somehow. <laughs> and I think sooner or later they're going to go to him, as which is what the leaders of the Senate did in 1974. Uh, they're going to go to him and say, you know, it's over. It's over. You know, you know and uh, yeah, they, yeah. you know, and they'll probably make some sort of deal with him. They won't be prosecuted if mm. if he leaves now, right? Which okay, you know, if they, if mm. they do that, they do it, but. Um, you know, it's not what I would do, but that's probably the way things work. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so you can't fight City Hall, but, but, uh, you know, what I think is that they'll, they'll tell them, you know, you've had a good run, son, but you're done. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the problem he has is that all of his, all of his negotiating power to get out of jail free is yeah. now. It's right now because when after the election, um, you know, he has no more negotiating power. And even if he wins, he knows the next four years will not be good because uh, the Democrats won't hesitate to make his life miserable. So, oh, they won't, yeah, right. And, <laughs> and, and so, you know, the question is when you're my age, he's only three, three months older than I am. Um, oh wow! He uh, at my age, you know, would I want to fight that kind of a fight for these four precious years at the end of your life? You know, when you don't mm-hmm. know how much longer you'll live. So um, that's that's the question, and um, so it's going to be interesting. But but anyway. I'm picking up in the collective unconscious um, like this. The, this feeling, and nobody else has prophesied that, as far as I know. But <laughs> but that's a, that's my prophecy. So you so you were here. Thank you, now. For sharing. you 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 know you know. I'll be a that, testament when it happens. I'll be like, I heard it first. Yeah. Skip. <laughs> yeah, I predicted it. Yeah. I hear you, Skip. We'll see. But I, it's probably wrong, but who knows? Um, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Where did stranger things have happened? Yeah. So yeah. anyway, uh, I've shown you a couple of images, but let me uh, let okay. me ask you to ask questions. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Here, and, you know, I have a couple other images I can show you. Uh, but, you know, your turn to talk. I Let me shut up. No, no problem, Skip. I, I, I feel like... Uh, I want I want to hear you talk too because I I really have enjoyed listening to your videos. Uh-huh. I think they're great information to people, especially people who probably won't have financial access to <laughs> these resources, you know. And thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's cool, you know. It's like uh, you see your videos and you're like a character. We're actually meeting the character, and, and I'm actually meeting you, you know. So yeah, yeah. And uh, well, I'm uh, I'm uh, actually meeting you, and I. Oh uh, yeah, that's know, true. And <laughs> and what I what I felt when I listened to your, you know, a couple of your first videos is that, um, you know, you're, you're really working it out. And, um, and these videos are very useful to people. Okay. And it, you know, it may be that not so many people will come and uh, Mm. listen to my videos, but there are a lot Mm. of people 
that would listen to your videos. And so yeah. uh, I think as you get more um, notoriety, um, mm -hmm. people will, will come. And, yeah. you know, if we post, if we post this video on my website, then I have 97, almost 9,800 um, wow. Okay. Thank you, Skip. <laughs> followers. So, uh, you know, you. I'll, I'll yeah, send, no. I'll send them to your uh, thank you, Skip. YouTube yeah. channel, right? So, uh, thank you. I'm very uh, honored that uh, you, you, you're doing this for me. Yeah. And, uh, and it, you know, for me, if I only reach one person, that, that was okay. You know, at least I, I reached one person and the more I reached well, them. Uh, yeah, you reach more than one person, but okay. <laughs> definitely. That's just the way I think, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you look, I started this project on YouTube four years ago, actually 50, mm -hmm. five zero months ago. And the first time I had a meeting, nobody came. And I just wow. did, I just did it on Periscope too. I, Periscope. I had a Periscope uh, account on my um, iPhone. So I did it on Periscope too. And when I was on Periscope, um, 35 people came in the Periscope session, including one from Argentina. And, oh, wow. and so I said, wow, okay, so I'm connecting with people, even if, I, you know, even if they're not physically here mm. and so on. And, you know, I had put a, a thing on Meetup to attract people. And, you know, that's a, that's a nice little system um, to, to meet people, have people get together and talk about things. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, we're not meeting many people these days, but, <laughs> but, but back then, um, <laughs> you know, my first meeting, my meetup thing hadn't gotten posted yet. And so that's why I was had nobody. But the the okay. next week I had eleven people 11 in the people. room. Yeah, and so you know, and there's a guy in New York uh, that is doing a Jungian meetup, and he he has hundreds hundreds of people that come to his meetups, wow. um, and uh, and he's done a great job with that. And you know, L.A. You live in L.A., right? Yes, yes, Los yeah. Angeles. Right. So in LA, you know, that's what the second largest city in the country or the third. Yes. Maybe, maybe after Chicago. So, um, you know, there are a lot of people around LA that would come and talk to you if you if you wanted to talk about some of these issues or. Oh, definitely um, would like to set that up, Skip. Definitely. If you know somebody here that I could speak to or maybe. Uh, uh, social distance being at a park or something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, and um, do you, are you familiar with the work of uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson from... Jordan from, Peterson? Yeah. I think he wrote the 12 rules, right? Yeah, he That's wrote the 12 or... rules, right. I've heard yeah. of his, he's, he, I like some of his views. <laughs> yeah, he, he's got a lot of emails on. Um, and I like most of the things that he says uh, for, mm. young, for young men, most of them. I, I think he's a little r rigid in his thinking and, mm. and it, caught, it caught him. Um, mm. but, uh, but, you know, he, he uh, has a lot of good advice for young men, yeah. especially in, in, um, on, on YouTube. Um, most of the young people that are doing YouTube are young men, okay? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I look at my statistics and I have, um, you know, 85% of my audience is young men between 18 and 44 years old. And, oh, wow. Okay. And so... Um, you know, why, why am I doing it? Cause I, I don't make any money by the way. And, mm. and mm -hmm. so, you know, that it's a, it's a false idea that you can make money on YouTube. You can, mm. okay. You might, you might, <laughs> Thank you, <for> letter. <laughs> you know, you, you might make money if you get people to come and buy a book from 
you or listen mm. to your music or come to you hear you at a comedy club or something you might make mm. money that way because they get to know you from the video and then they come to hear you in person right but mm. on youtube itself um and you know this is the problem that this uh you know there was some um asian american young woman who got very angry at youtube because they several years ago now maybe three two or three years ago they made the rule that you had to have a thousand followers and mm. and four thousand hours of video watched in the last one year before they would pay you anything okay oh, wow and and so there were a lot of people who were putting like three minute song videos on and they would get a lot of hits, but, um, but you can't, mm. people don't stay for a, a three minute song. You know, they, it takes a lot of three minute <laughs> songs before you get to 4,000 hours of listening. Oh, yeah. right? <laughs> and, and so, um, and so, this woman who had been relying on the on being able to get paid for her uh, songs uh, got angry and she went up to YouTube and, uh, and and killed somebody right but but the reality is and I'll tell you the truth okay the clear truth um, you know I've been doing this for four years I have uh, almost ninety eight hundred followers and I I get about um, uh, <clears throat> something like 29,000 minutes uh, watched every 28 days. Okay. Wow. That's good. <laughs> right? Um, and still, my pay from YouTube is under $60 a month. Okay. Uh, okay. We, we, maybe we have a bad connection. Can, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Here. I can hear you now, Skip. Okay. I just have you, I, I'm, I'm on my phone and somebody was calling me. Oh, okay. All right. Well, your your mic has gone out for me, so. Oh, you can't so, hear me? Oh, no, not very well. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me try one more time, Skip. Okay. Give me one second. backups. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, that'll be good. <laughs> now Better, much better, much better. Okay. <laughs> it's my backup, my plan B. <laughs> yeah, it's a good plan B. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you know, the point is that, okay, you can't make much money on YouTube, but you can get well known on YouTube. Mm. Okay. And so, I mean, this, the conferences I've been having with people like Dr. Olinoff, um, mm -hmm has only happened in the last three months and it's because wow. people have come to me and therefore I have a certain amount of credibility now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you might have to do it for three years before people really pay, mm. pay attention to you, you know, but, and, you know, traditionally people like Dr. Ulanoff would pay no attention to somebody like me. I mean, even wow. though I'm I'm an educated man and I've had ten years of higher education, so it's not that I'm stupider mm. than her. <laughs> mm. it, it's just this Jungian community of uh, mm. mental health professionals 
just never wanted to talk to laymen like me. People, that, I'm not a, mm. I'm not a professional mental health professional, right? Mm. I'm, I just know that in my lifetime, reading Jung's work has saved me. Okay, mm. and that's why I was especially interested in her topic on Sunday, which it was about redemption because mm. because I've needed redemption many times okay in my life um and you know at one point I thought I was going to be a general in the Marine Corps I had that mm. dream. I had that dream anyway I had that vision that I would be a general in the Marine Corps and then I did uh -huh. a really, then I did a really stupid thing which was that I I was walking across the parking lot at uh -huh. Marine Corps Base Quantico and I slipped and fell and broke my leg. And, uh -huh. and so that was the end of my Marine Corps career. Right? <laughs> and so that, wow. you know, and so then, then you have to reinvent yourself, right? So mm -hmm. then after that, I um, got a job teaching and, um, my, the guy who was the dean of, of the graduate school where I was working, um, it, well, it's a long story, but anyway, I got fired. Let, let me just say got fired. I got fired after two years. Um, and there's a long story associated with that, but, but he was an alcoholic and, wow. and uh, he, he stole something from me that was quite valuable and mm. i i objected and and <laughs> end, i ended up getting fired as a result and wow. so and so then uh but be, then so i had to reinvent myself again right so one of my students was uh was a doctor who mm -hmm. um was wanted to get the typing done in his office and so, mm -hmm. and he thought that he could get it done in Taiwan. And so, Taiwan. <laughs> so I said, yeah, let me, let me try to do that. Right. <laughs> You'll pay me a little money. I'll try to do that, which he did. And oh, wow. um, one thing led to another. It's a very complicated story, but after 15 years, the company, um, not, not the company originally, but an, a company that I founded after that and as an immediate follow-on um, mm. went public. Okay, so I founded a public company, right? Oh, wow, wow. To 2005. Then in 2008, bang, the financial crisis oh, wow. yes, yes. came, right? And then yes, I lost yes, all yes. my money. I lost everything. Wow. Wow. I ended up getting foreclosed on in my house. Um, wow. That stuff's good. And so I, yeah. I had to fight the banks to stay in my house. So I stayed in my house for nine years by fighting wow. them. And, uh, but finally I decided to just let them go. But I, I mm. fought it very strongly. And, and so I took them to the Court of Appeals of Maryland uh, five times and to the US Supreme Court once. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow, you so, put up a hell of a fight. <laughs> yeah, that was a hell of a fight, I could tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they knew they had been in a fight after that one. And, oh. <laughs> but, I mean, but also I got out of the house. I got to stay in the house for nine years without paying anything, right? Oh, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it, it had its benefits, right? Um, yes. And so... You know, meanwhile, I just have had to reinvent myself all, all along. And, you know, this is what happens to everybody. Okay, it's mm. not just me. It's not Jung. It's everybody. Okay, it's what happens to everybody. You know, wow, life, yeah, is, yeah. life is going along well for five or ten years. And then all of a sudden, man, shit happens. And, shit happens. Yeah. And... Um, and then, then you have to reinvent yourself somehow. You know? mm. So, you know, it's it, it's it's like you, you yes. know, you you were all set to do 
comedy routines. I was, I was, all, yeah. All of a sudden, bang, we have this mm. COVID crisis and you can't do it. But, mm. you know, you have to look at the bright side of it and mm. say, okay, well, now I have time to really develop a strong comedy routine. And, mm. you know, things may be closed down for two years. Just two years. Just two years. assume that. Just assume <laughs> that it's going to take two years for things to open. Mm. Uh, and say, okay, I'm going to take these two years to really develop some strong comedy routines. Or, you know, the other alternative that you mentioned is music. So you could really, yes, develop, I am. you know, you could develop some good music. What kind of music do you do? Uh, I do, uh, I'm a guitarist and I, and I sing. So I sing kind of like, uh, I like to call myself the, the Bob Dylan of Mex uh, Mexican Bob Dylan, you know, like, oh, cool. uh, I kind of, yeah, cool. I, li I like Bob Dylan a lot. Who else I like? Um, I like Marvin Gaye a lot too. He's, mm -hmm. he's a good artist. Yeah. And also I like uh, Antonio Aguilar. I don't know if you heard Antonio Aguilar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you heard? Do you, yeah. So he's yeah like, do, you, do you write uh, poetry then? I do write poetry too. Yeah, I do write poetry. Yeah. And usually I make my poems into songs. Yeah, uh, that's what you have to do, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, I, so the point is now that you now that this is happening to you, you know, I don't know how you live right now while things are shut down. But you know, if you want to ultimately be a famous comedian, for example, mm -hmm. you need to develop a following. And, mm. you know, through the YouTube, for example, you could easily be developing that following, you know, the following. In, in that, in that LA area, right? Yes, so in yes, other yes. words, if, if you started to do a five minute routine or, or, you know, whatever it is, I don't know what the, the going time is for a comedy routine, but, um, you know, if you started to do a little bit of comedy, we could all use that, as Anne Ulanoff correctly said the other day. Yes. You know, yeah. we, could all, we could all use a few laughs, right? <laughs> we definitely need them, Skip. <laughs> oh, right. man, we need them right now. Uh, right. And so, uh, and so now's your chance, you know, now you can... Thank you, Skip. Um, now you can develop that, you know, on your YouTube channel, in addition to your reflections, which I don't want to... Yeah put you off on that because but, i oh oh i would like I, to be a specific kind of comedian that I, because i always feel there's different types i would like to be kind of like george carlin i really mm -hmm. like his style his delivery what he did and mm -hmm. I, i'm not gonna be what he did but i, I could like something to that nature you know yeah yeah no I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, to the nature th that would be good we don't have a good george carlin right now no we don't <laughs> And, no, we and, don't at all. We don't. And so, if you know, if you attract people to your comedy, now are you on Twitter? Uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Instagram, and okay, well, you have to be and on tw Twitter too. Twitter too. Yeah, uh, and you know, here, 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 here's why. Okay. Yes. Uh, and you'll have to figure out how Twitter works. But uh, here's why. I have 35,000 followers on Twitter. Okay. Wow. All right. 35,000. 35,000. And so if you establish a Twitter account and then you create a YouTube video YouTube. That's, that's funny or something like that, that's good, uh -huh. and you bring it to yeah. my attention, then I can yes. bring it to the attention of all of my followers. Thank you. Yeah, and, definitely skip. Right. And uh, are you familiar with BTS? No, what is that? Oh, BTS, BTS? is. No, you have to learn mm -hmm. this. Okay. Oh, you must, thank you for teaching you me. You must <laughs> learn this. Okay. You must learn <laughs> BTS. Okay. I will. I will. I will. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, no matter what you think of BTS, you need to learn this. Okay. Now, the oh, reason. What is... Okay. So BTS is a, a Korean pop so-called boy band okay 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 <laughs> right and and they um do a lot of things i i don't want to spoil it for you so i, I okay just, i gotta I, check it out <laughs> I, I i just want you to go on to youtube okay. and put bts oh. in and put uh put in bts uh black swan 
Black okay. Swan. Okay. And put in BTS, Boy in Love. Boy in Love. Okay. Which they did in a collaboration with Halsey. Okay. Do you know oh. who Halsey is? She's a famous female rock <laughs> star. Look. Okay. Halsey. H A L S C Y. Okay. Um, so the thing about BTS that you particularly need to understand is that they have 80 million followers, eight zero wow. million followers million. around the world. Okay. And number one, number two, uh -huh. the last two albums that they have done are based on Jungian psychology. And wow and based on the work of Dr. Mary Stein. Um, and so um, I'm going to be uh, interviewing Mary Stein on the 9th of August. On the 9th of August? Yeah. Definitely come, I will definitely check that one out. Yeah. And so you need to definitely come to that. But for example, Mary had a book uh, called uh, Jung's Map of the Soul that he wrote uh -huh. uh, about 25 years ago. And it was, it was sort of not very well known. It was mainly known in the Jungian community. And, you know, I had read it a couple of times and, you know, I thought it was fine, but I didn't think it was very special particularly, but this uh, promoter in Korea, in Seoul, Korea, read it mm. and read a bunch of other things about um about Jung and he decided to make a series of albums for BTS or BTS wrote the wrote the songs um mm -hmm. where um that followed what Murray Stein said in his book Map of the Soul okay and so um in April of last year, uh, the first of these re really focused on Jung's work uh, albums came out, and, and it's called um, Map of the Soul Persona. Okay, so Persona. You can, yeah, so you can put that into your uh, search, BTS Map of the Soul Persona, okay? And, and, uh, and that became number one in the world. Uh, wow. and, and last year, um, let's see, at the, at the Billboard Music Awards in May of last year, BTS was number one uh, group in the world, okay? Oh, wow. At the Billboard Awards on May 1st, 2019. Um, 2019, wow. Yeah, okay. So, so they've been focusing on this Jungian area right and and they have another book uh, another uh album out now called map of the soul seven and there's seven. seven of them so that's why it's seven uh but it has this uh, uh amazing um video uh called black swan that you need to black see swan. black swan um and then murray stein who's sort of the leading a union analyst in the world right now and who we're going to interview um uh -huh. he started to write new books so here's Map his, of the soul. Uh, here's his new book which is based on bts it's called map of the soul seven persona shadow ego shadow and ego in a wow. world of bts right in the world of bts by murray stein yeah. Okay, now, so he's now taken his book, which became suddenly a bestseller, right? This old book yes. that he had written 25 years ago <laughs> suddenly became a bestseller, and now he's created wow. two books around BTS, okay? BTS. And, and so the reason I want you to pay attention to that is I became very popular with the BTS people. Okay, because, mm. because I did some work last year. In fact, there's a playlist on my site uh, that's trying to educate young BTS people. There are a lot of young women, but there are a lot of older people too. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, last year they sold out the major stadia around the world like 14 or 15 times. I mean, they, they sold out the Rose Bowl twice, Soldier wow. Field in Chicago twice. Um, I think there was something in Houston tw- twice. There was um, Giant Stadium in outside of New York City twice. They've sold out these stadiums that hold 80,000 people, right? Sold yeah. them out. Okay. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is not a comedy club, right? And, no, that's a, that's a lot of, wow. And, and then they went over, you know, they went to Brazil and sold out a stadium there twice. And then they went to UK and sold out Wembley Stadium twice. And, uh, I think, and then they went to uh, France and Germany and sold out a couple of stadiums there twice. And their, oh, wow. and their shows are just monumental. They're just really... Do they sing awesome. in Korean or do they sing in English? They sing in Korean. In and, Korean? Okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, people around the world are listening to it, right? Yes, yes, yes. And... Uh, and, but what they do also is they dance. Okay. They dance, okay. <laughs> okay. Now I, I'm not. I, I don't want to spoil it for you. So okay, I, I want you to have the the full story about BTS from your own experience. Okay. Thank, so thank you, Skip. I will look for it as soon as we hang up. Okay. So I'm just giving you a pointer. You need to look at this. But look at them. the reason I'm saying this is because. What I want you to do is when you start looking at BTS, whatever mm-hmm. your own experience is, it, is of it, write it down. Make, make good notes about that experience. Mind you, there are 80 million people, more than that probably, because it was 80 million. Mm. It was 80 million in April of 2019 when I started. And it must mm. be it must be over 100 million today, right? I have a question, Skip. When I listen to it, should I listen with subtitles on the bottom and just hear the language? Or does it matter? No, just watch. Just watch? Okay. Oh, just watch. Just okay, watch. Okay. <laughs> just watch. Okay, just watch. Okay. And, okay. and uh, also, um, look at the video, the music video for Persona. Okay. It, okay. It's, a, it's a song called Persona, P-E-R-S-O-N-A. Okay. This music video is just hugely Jungian, okay? Hugely, okay. Um, and and so... Oh, Skip, so I have some... I'm in the park and there's some bugs all over me. Let me blow them away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've, I've, they've been attacking me for a second. Sorry okay. about that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the problem about have, working in a, in a, in like a, outside, you know, you get like bugs. And, yeah. Sorry, and I don't like killing them. I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's okay. They could go on to their next life, probably. Their uh, bug, <laughs> <laughs> probably their bug life is, hasn't been so wonderful. Probably. It's good. Maybe they were suicidal. Like, I don't know. No, no, that's too dark. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to be careful with that. That's so, no, 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 no. They may, I don't know. <laughs> you yeah. saw my video on dark humor, right? I was like, a, it's really uh, powerful, right. but it's dangerous. Yeah, I got to be yeah, careful yeah. with that stuff. So. Right. Yeah, you yeah. Do. and you're quite right about that. And so yeah, yeah. and you know, that's one of the things that I especially respect about your videos is that you're quite thoughtful about such things, right? Thank you. Thank you, Skip. And, yeah. and uh you know, and suicide is real and um Yeah, I don't that. want to play with it. Yeah, I don't want to play with it, but Yeah, I mean um you know, in the Marines, we lose about 800 U.S. Marines every year wow. to either car accidents or suicide. Um, suicide, wow. You know, and, uh, you know, these are young men, mostly be, maybe 18 or 19 years old. So they haven't, they're not even reached maturity yet. So they, mm. don't, they don't have enough information to really decide if life is worth living or not, <laughs> right? No, I hear you. Yeah, you know, so, it's true. Skip, it's true. So we have yeah. to we have to emphasize to them that it is worth living, and, and it is, you know, and redemption. Uh, that Dr. Ulanoff talked about redemption mm. and 
being able to reinvent yourself is a part of life. You have to do that. Okay. Yeah. And, and so anyway, going back to Twitter now for a moment. Okay. So let's say you do a new video, 10 minute video on whatever topic it is, then you mm -hmm. can, you can highlight that you can share that on Twitter in addition to Instagram and Facebook and other places. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, yeah. But if you put ampersand, you know, at skip underscore Conover, that's my Twitter okay. handle in, in the tweet. If you put my name in the tweet, then I can retweet it. And so when I retweet it, even though you may have three followers on Twitter because you're, <laughs> because you're just follow, you're just starting, you know. If I, I know what you mean. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Right. If I retweet thank it, you, then thank it you, goes to my thirty-five thousand followers. Right. Thank you. Definitely making a skip. I mean, I'm making a, a, a Twitter account when we hang up. Right. And and, and, and still, also yeah. and and BTS. If you put hashtag. Okay, hashtag, you know what hashtag is, right? Yes. Hashtag yes. BTS. Uh -huh. It attracts all these 80, 80 million people. Oh, uh, and not uh, all of them, but, you know, a lot. Wh whoever, whoever's looking at that moment will see it. Right? Mm, and, mm. you know, I, I'm not saying stop Instagram. Instagram is also very effective, I understand. Um, mm. But, you know, you definitely should should do Twitter and I can help you with Twitter. I can't help much with, with uh, Instagram. And I can also help you with Facebook. If you do things, Facebook. if you do things <clears throat> that relate to, to you. Yeah. Right. Of course, of course, Kim. I run right. it through you and then you give me your opinion and then we'll see you. you know? yeah, yeah. Let me know. Right. Let me know. Okay. Definitely. And, and I'll be happy to work with you for, you know, as long as it takes, whatever it takes. Thank you, Skip. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it, Skip. Okay, so, yeah. because, uh, you know, I really, I just, I just can't tell you how taken I am with, the, you know, your approach to your videos. And Thank so you. I'm, not, Thank I'm you. not, I don't want to in any way suggest that you should change anything about what you're doing. Mm. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to give you some pointers about some other things you might think about. Yes, okay. please. And um, you know, and I have, I have promoted your videos a, a couple of times so far, but um, you know, on Twitter, but uh, you know, it, it takes a while to get it to build up to the point where you have a hundred and then 200 and, a while. and so on. But I mean, this, this video will help and, you know, because if, yeah. I, if I put it out on my site, uh, yes. we're, we're going to have, uh, by the, by the end of the week, we'll have 250 people watching it at least. Wow. Right. I worked so hard for those 31 views. <laughs> Like reaching out to people, but that's I'm, so, I'm, 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 I'm. Thank you, Skip. You know that was like it takes a long time to get that many people, and, and I was but, committed to the hard work. But yeah, you, you well, helped me a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to do you the skip. hard work, but you know. I oh yeah, the, I'm, I'm gonna put the hard work. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I have this yeah. friend uh, in Montana. His name is Tim Holmes, and he's a very yeah. famous artist. He's the first American artist to have a show at the Hermitage in Russia. Okay, oh, first wow. American artist to have a solo show at the Hermitage, uh, which is one of the most famous museums in the world. And, mm. and, uh, and that happened to him in 93, I think, so 30 years ago almost. Um, but Tim, Tim, <laughs> Tim had a website up and he had this one video on, on it and uh, uh -huh. after 10 years it only had 100 hits and i said what the heck Tim? <laughs> what why is why are you getting so only few 100. hits you know why are you getting so few hits 100 hits in in 10 years and wow. so then i did this interview with him and you should look at that interview on my youtube channel Definitely. You, you can find it he's an artist so look for the the thumbnail that has a Tim drawing, Holmes? huh? Tim Is Holmes. Is it Tim Holmes? Yeah, Tim, Tim Holmes. Holmes. 
Tim Holmes. Uh -huh. but, yeah, he wasn't there on Sunday, but he's he's in many of my videos. And but I interviewed him last fall, right? Mm. And so in that interview, I I took the video that he had put up ten years ago and spliced it into my video, right? Mm. And and uh, when I put it onto YouTube, I immediately got a copyright oh, claim wow. on it within you right. know within a minute. I mean, YouTube if you if you take somebody else's music, uh, YouTube knows it instantly. They have supercomputers yeah. that get it right, and so you can't use other people's music unless it's in the public domain, and and YouTube. Mm -hmm offers a lot of public domain music, but but Tim had used this music that he didn't have the oh. right to, okay? And and so as a result, um, YouTube was not showing that video in the United States. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. and Tim never knew it. He was sitting up in Montana, Montana. And, and the copyright didn't apply to other countries. So people maybe in Australia could see his video, mm. but, but they weren't showing it in the US. And, uh -huh. and I said, Oh, my God, no wonder you're, you know, your video is <laughs> uh, popular. And, and so now, um, you know, the interview I had with him, I, I just see if I can figure it out real quick. Uh, uh -huh. how, how many views it has uh it's it's a lot anyway it's a lot and it's in less than a year that oh, lot wow. okay it's down in like the fourth fifth row but um well okay the this particular it only shows 520 but it's 520 in nine months as opposed yeah, yeah. it's 520 in nine months instead of 110 years, right? Mm. And, and so that's the, that's the point. Um, I, th I thought it was many more than that. But anyway, it's a good interview. You should watch it. I will, Tim. I mean, I will skip. skip. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, um, I don't know. That's all I really wanted to say to you was to keep going, man. You're, you're, Thank you, Skip. You're doing the right thing, okay? And and what, okay, here's what I wanted to say to you. Every Monday night at um, 8 p.m. my time, so 5 p.m. your time, I do a teaching. Yeah. Just for average people. It's not for people that know anything, okay? I also have an advanced group, but I have a basic teaching that I do every, uh -huh. every Monday at 5 p.m your time and yes. um and what i'm going to start to talk about is the tarot Do you, are you familiar with the tarot tarot cards yes yes Tar oh, right okay like, i pronounce them a little differently tarot is tarot or tarot yeah. tarot tarot. Or tarot tarot i mean you can pronounce it tarot if you want Wait a minute. tarot Okay, this is my mini set, okay? Oh, okay, okay. All right, but, okay, so because I know my audience is all these young men, um, mm. I know there's um, one thing that's really a problem for young men, mm. and that's figuring out where they should be in the chaos, okay? Because mm. life, life right now is chaos, okay? Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, I heard a statistic years ago, you probably haven't heard me say this, but I do say it often, that uh, in the 16th century, only 400 years ago, mm -hmm. um, the average person only had got enough information in a lifetime that we get mm -hmm every Sunday in the LA Times or the New York Times. Mm. You know, you know the big <laughs> newspaper that you get on Sunday? Yes, well, just, yes. Just imagine that newspaper is all the information you ever get in your whole life. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
so so that that amount of information was only 400 years ago the average person only got that much information and mm. and so to, you know in the 20th century people got a lot more because we had education public education and lots of other things but then in 1995 we opened up the commercial internet and once that happened now you and I can have this conversation as an example yes, yes. okay you and I can have this conversation and so um, so it's just completely changed the world you know because yes, yes. even 25 years ago I would have had no way of meeting you and you know 10 years before that is when i did meet my wife online believe it or not oh, wow wow <laughs> believe it or not we say i say and nobody's disputed me that we're the first uh -huh. couple first couple to meet online <laughs> and marry okay and that happened 30, i believe yeah that happened 35 years ago and nobody's disputed wow. it so far um <laughs> And, and so, so that's how much the world has changed, right? Yes. Yeah. Just in this last 25 years since the commercial internet. And, um, and so now with the way it's developed and with cell phones and iPads and all that stuff, now you have access to all of the information in the world, okay, mm. essentially. Okay, there might be some government secrets somewhere you can't have, but but in general, you can get access to every piece of information in the world. Okay, so mm -hmm. how does that compare to the Sunday LA Times? You know? It doesn't. It yeah. doesn't at all. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So, so I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> right. So, so the, much. Right. So the the problem of guys like you and your age group um, yeah. is figuring out what to do, okay, with all that information. And there's not much guidance about that. I mean, Jordan Peterson gives some, uh, but he, he tends to be very moralistic, I think. Um, mm. And so what I wanna do is I wanna give people some handles, okay? so. So I understand that the main problem for you guys is this quantity of chaos of information, right? Mm. What should I be doing? How do I live my life to get it going and get it going properly? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, the answer to that is that you have to be able to take yourself out of that chaos and listen to your own unconscious okay you have to listen to yourself and the advice that you get now you're already getting advice because you already started to do your your youtube channel and it, you know you didn't care whether anybody listened or not you just started to talk and yes. oh by the way you have a lot of wisdom in what what you've been saying so um so it's a valuable thing for people right and so, um, and so any comedian has to get their material out of their unconscious, okay? Because that's where it is. That's where, where the funny things are, <laughs> right? Very much, I agree. Right. I agree, Tim, very yeah. much. <laughs> and, and, and so, so, um, so whatever people think you have to do the opposite in order to get to make it funny right yes right yeah you, you have to you have to needle people where they have a wound <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right you know? i agree i agree oh. skip <laughs> okay all right so so I should have been a comedian, but I, I didn't figure this out until I was I, I 70, did. so it was too late. It's never too late. You, you, could be, you, could be a, you could be the comedian that became at 70 years old. You know, I always felt we have little comedians in us, all, all of us. You know? Oh, we all do, all surely. We all do. Oh, yeah, yeah, we all I'm do. afraid my taste in humor is pretty dry. I'm too much <laughs> like a British guy, I guess. But, um, but anyway, the point is that 
that you, you need to be able to take yourself out of the chaos and figure out where you are in, mm. in, in connection to the chaos, right? And so that's where the tarot comes in. Okay, not for oh. divination, okay? Mm. You know, a tar tarot reading is divination. Okay, and I can mm. I can do a tarot reading. I I've been mm. doing I've been doing tarot readings for the president of the United States every day, recently. Mm. And uh, boy, if you want to see some some dark tarot readings, <laughs> wow, I'll, wow! I'll, I'll just I'll just give you a sense of it here. Let me see if I can uh, uh -huh. show you. Okay, is this today? Let me see. Uh, <laughs> I think this one is today, so I'm going to share it with you. Okay. Um, and so, all right, there is, wait a minute. Okay, there it is. All right. Uh huh. All right. Wow. So, so um, he's got, he's got, I think this is the one that he has seven cards with swords in it okay he's got the three of three of swords the nine of swords the seven of swords wow a lot of swords coming out of <laughs> and, and i don't know if you can see on on your device but these swords uh -huh. are not, not very favorable toward him wow right? and so but the outcome card which is this card Yes. Tells him what he should do, which is he should make wow, peace. Okay. Should he, make should, peace. He, he should make peace because the environment card, this card, number eight card here, um, uh -huh. me, uh, is the chariot. And when oh. the chariot is right side up, it means that you have control of all the forces in your life, oh. right? All the dark uh -huh. forces and the and the bright forces. So you see this chariot yes. has a black horse and a white horse. And so the, the mature man who knows how to control the forces can drive a chariot, right? But yes. in this case, his environment is that the chariot is upside down, it's reversed. It's upside down. Okay, and so that means in divination uh -huh. that he doesn't have control of the forces. Okay, mm. that the the horses are going to drive, you know, they're going to run away with him and uh, and finally crash him somewhere. Right. Yes. Except that he gets he has this hope that his um, his ideas will see him through, but they only see him through if he makes peace. That's what the outcome card is. That's. That's what this four, four of swords is, because you see all the four guys sitting around and they have their swords uh -huh. in front of them. They're not using those swords. And, yes. and so they're at a kind of a peace conference, right? And that's, yes. that's what the president needs right now. Um, yes, yes. Right, and so it's a very telling thing. Okay, so, but that's divination, okay? That's, that's laying the cards out, okay? But the point about the cards is that they also tell you all the major things that can happen to you in a lifetime okay wow and and so the first 22 of the cards are called the major arcana and and those are um and by the way there's there's a eight, 18 video series on my website about reading oh, okay I can... cards so you I can, can go there too. <laughs> if you wanted to learn how to do it, you could re listen to those videos. But, but the essence, Definitely. and but the but the essence of it is that the first twenty-two cards are the major archetypal people and events that you run into in a lifetime. Mm. And, and so, like the number three card is called the Empress card, but it's it really represents mother. It represents your mother. My okay. mother. And the number four card uh, is the emperor card, and it represents mm. your father. Okay. Mm. <laughs> and the number five card is the hierophant, which represents sort of the rules or the teacher. 
Okay, in the in the imagery, it's a it's a picture of the Pope. Okay, <laughs> but, but, so the the Pope is telling you what the rules are, and he's teaching you, right? And yes, and so the then the number, uh, I think I, I forget whether. Um, let me just look here. Uh, I, I forget whether the chap the chariot is. Um, I guess the chariot is number seven, uh, the chariot seven, number seven, and and that represents getting control of the forces in your life so that you can live a successful life without too much hassle, right? That's what the chariot represents, and the number nine card in the major arcana is like the hermit. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's a sort of a wise old man like me <laughs> wise old man yeah <laughs> right and, but i mean if you watched uh harry potter or lord of the rings or something like that there's always a, an old magician who knows some things that comes along and teaches you and mentors you yes okay and like so, merlin right merlin the, merlin, the magician is, is a good example great example um yeah and so you know i've i've told you some magic things just in this conversation yes that yes. that you can use to magically change what what is was originally just an effort by yourself it's now mm. an e effort with with somebody who already has built up a following okay thank you skip Yes. But, you know, whether I'm good or bad, I mean, that, that mm. you have to decide in due time. But, but, the, point, yeah. the, but the point is that, that people like this do come, on, come to you in your lifetime, to all people, mm. to all of us, okay? We all find somebody who will mentor us. And, yes. and so what I'm going to do, so the reason for all this discussion here is that starting next Monday, I'm going to, I'm going to teach people not how to read the cards, but I'm going to teach people what the cards mean. Okay, and so I I've mean, given, wow. I've, I've given you a little sense of it uh, in this conversation. Just can I for, ask you a quick question, Skip? Sure, sure. What, what? Can I order my cards on Amazon, or do I have to go to like a specific kind of like yeah, store? Yeah, you, or? You, no, you can go to Amazon. I mean, Amazon. The, if, if you want to learn well okay let me tell you where to yes. go okay there's a book called uh, the 78 degrees of wisdom 78 degrees of wisdom. Uh -huh. okay, i mean here degrees of wisdom seven, 78 degrees of wisdom because there's 78 yes. cards and she does a terrific job of describing all the cards and so on okay um or another alternative is is the new mythic tarot. I like that one also. New mythic tarot. Right, but but it'll either one of these books will teach you the basics of what the cards mean, and but the significance of it really signifies it. Significance of it is that these are the major events that happen in everybody's life. Mm. And so now you're facing the the chaos, right? As a young man, you're facing the chaos. And if you go back and you understand the cards, then you can understand basically just, you know, in a basic template where you are in your life. Mm. Okay. In er any given thing. Okay. And, and so it's 78 ideas about where you are in your life. And in divination, they can also be reversed. So it's another 78, because if you mm -hmm. do a div divination and they're reversed, it means the opposite, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you have the em empress reversed, then it's the bad mother, not the good mother. Bad mother, right? yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> you don't and, have nothing that comes in the middle, like a ma bad good mother? It has to be like the two polars? Well, 
Uh, I mean, all these things have shading to them. Yeah, right? shading. Mm. Right. So, for example, that layout that I showed you um, earlier, that's called the Celtic Cross. And that layout, um, any of the 78 cards could be in any of those 10 positions. Okay. Mm. And so, obviously, they mean something different in each one of those positions and and so each of the cards could mean 20 things okay because it could mean 10 things upright and 10 things reversed so so there's <laughs> there's plenty of shadings and possibilities there right so for example wow um, that's a lot <laughs> no yeah, so lot. L let me I'll, I'll just give you a sense of this in terms of this reading, but I'm not trying to teach you how to read here, but just in this, in this um, uh, reading, there's mm -hmm. some, some positive factors too. It's not all negative. Okay. There's a lot of, there's a lot of negative in there. And, and I think yes. you'll probably appreciate that there's a lot of negative attitude about the president right now, but uh -huh. there are three very good things here for him. Okay, one is, this is where he is right now, which is mm. the Ace of Swords. So that means that he um, may be in a good position to find a good path, okay, to discern, mm -hmm. to figure out. Swords mean discernment or figuring things out, right? So he's in a very good position to figure things out, okay? his problem is this reverse chariot, which is that he doesn't mm. have control of the forces around him. Right. But, wow. but another good thing is he has the King of swords and he has been, I mean, he, he managed to get himself to be president of the United States, you know, so he's no mm. dummy. No, he's not. You're right. You're he's right. no dummy. Okay. And, yeah. And so he can hope this is this mm. card represents hopes and fear, so he can hope that it'll come up with a with a good answer, right? Yes. Okay. And then this card, the number 10 card in the layout, is the outcome card. And so this outcome is the four of swords. And the four of swords means in this case that you know all these guys have laid down their swords, they've made peace. Okay. And so what it says to him is, you know, things are not looking real good right now, but if he cuts through uh -huh. and uses his discernment well, then he can make peace. Okay. That's the uh -huh. point. That's what this, that's, that's what this mean, this reading means really. Okay. Uh -huh. Cause, Cause there's a lot of bad shit here. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and this isn't so good. And and this is the justice card. He's gotten this justice card in two days in a row in this oh, number wow. five position, which is justice is seeing right through him, right? Um, yeah. Or has been seeing right through him. And he and this card, the moon card reverse, means that he um he hasn't um been reflecting enough on mm. the situation and he needs to reflect on it but the good thing is that he has the potential here with the ace of swords to figure out what the best path for himself is okay mm -hmm. and his hope is that he can he can uh, use his discernment to find an answer and the answer, mm. and the answer is the, the outcome card is to make peace, right? To make peace. He needs to make peace because otherwise he's got all these people all around him that are trying to uh, give him a sword in a way that isn't, oh, he... isn't so pleasant, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear you. Skip. Right. And he's got, let's see, one, two, three. Uh, four. four. He's got four reverse cards here and plus a half reverse card here. Half reverse. And this, this is one, two, 
three, four and a half. Okay, so so he needs to pay attention. He, you know, the swords are out for him. But if mm. if, he, if he uses his discernment, he can find his way through. But what yes. that what that reading suggests to him is to make peace, find a way to make peace. Make peace. Right. right. Mm. And um, and so, uh, but that that's a divination, okay? And, and that's a little bit different from what I want to start teaching next Monday, which mm. is what I want to start teaching next Monday is that... Um, is that each of these cards represents either a person or an event that is typical in everybody's life. Everybody's okay. There's everyone, you know, I, at one point or another, every one of those cards is applied to me. Okay. Wow. Both positive and reversed. And reversed. so, and so the secret is don't, let yourself stay stuck in the chaos where you can't figure anything mm. out and you're flailing around your minds in a whirl and you can't really work it out. Pull yourself out of the chaos and just go and read this book or listen to my videos about this, where I'm going to talk about, you know, let's think about what this situation means for people. How does it come mm. up? You know, how does it come up? And you know, what, how does it apply to my life? And so if you reflect on those things, then it, it shows you a path forward. That's what it does. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. And, and so. Is it going to be, a, are you going to, is this going to be like a private class or is it going to be on YouTube too? Or? No, it's going to be live on YouTube. Oh, perfect. Okay, then I'll right. definitely be there too. Yeah. It'll be a it'll be a live stream on YouTube, and I'll oh, I'll add okay. I'll add you to my group so that you'll get a link to it. You can join the Zoom session. So it's it's uh, next uh, Friday at five thirty. No, next Monday. Every Monday. Oh, next at, Monday. Every Monday at five o'clock. Five o'clock. Okay. For you, for you in California, it's five o'clock. For me, <laughs> okay. it's for me, it's eight o'clock. Okay, eight o'clock. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, can I tell you something? I thought sure. you were reading the Bhagavad Gita, and for yeah. some reason, I, I think I thought you were in India for some reason because the, the your background looks so like luscious and green, and I thought you were like in southern India or no, yeah, no, that, or, that that uh, <laughs> that background is Carl Jung's house. He oh, built, okay, that makes he, a lot of sense. He built that house with his bare hands. Oh, okay. Okay. oh wow, wow. He, he bu built that himself. Okay. Wow. And, That's amazing. Uh, and so it's it's his testament to the fact that you have to stay creative. That's yes. why Ann Ulanoff liked you on Sunday, okay? Mm. Because you're a creative person. Okay. Mm. And we, in order to keep your mental health, you have to be creative. And that's what Jung did, right? And mm. so remember, I was talking about the wise old man earlier. Mm. Uh, well, here's one more image from the Red Book. And so this figure is called Philemon. And this is the wise old man that about mm. that advised Jung. And Mm. And he came from Jung's unconscious and is the self, what, what we call the self in Jungian psychology. And so Jung had a, a dream or a vision and, and then many visions with Philemon. And so that's a central part of the Red Book. And, mm. and so Jung was very cagey guy, okay? And hmm. one of the things he said, you know, people in my day are not ready for this. So I can hmm. only, only lead, leave hints that other people wow, can find. Man. Okay, so here, yeah. right next to Philemon, okay? Hmm. So Philemon is like his God, okay? Yes. And right next to Philemon is this quote from the Bhagavad Gita. Which, wow. I, which, of course, I had seen many times before. Um, 
but it was only in April that I realized how important this quote is because what he's saying by this quote being in that position, that's the hint, is that that everything I've said is also in the Bhagavad Gita. That's why I'm reading the Bhagavad Gita. Wow. Okay. And, yeah. and so the interesting thing is, I hadn't looked at the Bhagavad Gita in 50 years, to be honest wow. with you. I had not looked at it in 50 years. And when I saw that, I'm just looking for my book here. Uh -huh. When I realized that, it so happened that four days later, I met the guy who wrote this book, which is the study guide to the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> wow. Okay, just by synchronicity, I'm going to stop this. But anyway, what, the, what this quote says is, when iniquity runs afoot, a then mm -hmm. God manifests and, and kicks out all the, all the bad people. Okay, that's, mm. the, that's what the Bhagavad Gita says. So, so I got this book, The Study Guide to the Bhagavad Gita, and I, I had met Les Morgan, who's the author of this. And so in the back of this book, he's got theme guides. He's got the 11 themes from the Bhagavad Gita. And I went through his 11 themes, and I said, holy smokes, this is the basic ideas of Jungian psychology. Right mm. here. That's, that's mm. what it is. Okay. That's what it is. And so this hint of Jung's that's next to Philemon mm. in the mm. Red Book is actually saying, go back to the Bhagavad Gita and take a look at that. There's a lot of my advice there. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's 5,000 years old and it wasn't invented yeah. by Jung. Right. Mm. So, anyway, uh, I am sort of out of time because I promised my wife. <laughs> no problem, no problem, Skip. I, I appreciate you inviting me, and and I, I you know, I, I'm a big. I like to. I took a lot of notes. So I have to go and look yeah. at them, and and definitely I got a lot of things to do. Yeah, and I'm gonna work on. So uh, anyway, I gave you some things to think about, and I'll send you uh, an invitation to our Monday night session. And so you can be in the webinar if you want to be. And, yes, I would like to. Uh, or you can just listen on YouTube because I also stream it on YouTube. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Either way. But, um, but if you want to participate in the conversation, you can okay. come on to Zoom and participate with us. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And we have, a, we have a lot of pretty wise people that are participating in that way so you, okay. you, know, you can be you can be one of them <laughs> and Thank you, sir. and um, and then over time we'll see where it goes and if yes. you want if you want to have another conversation sometime i'm game you know i'm retired I, I will, definitely definitely maybe like in a couple of months just to see uh, where i'm at and i would like to um no, yeah. Meanwhile, you. meanwhile, yeah. I followed your uh, YouTube channel, and so I may put some comments in from time to time. But uh, please do. I really would appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much, and it was nice meeting you. And uh, you know, just um, stay safe. I know these times are crazy, so just sending yeah, prayers to you and your, and your loved ones. Yeah. Thank you, Skip, for taking we're time. We're being very careful. So, anyway, good, pe peace, Mario. I'll I'll see you, you soon.